right, so Psalms chapter 7, 8, 41 and 42 will set it up for us. Yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Somebody say, take the limits off. They did not remember His power for the day when He redeemed them from the enemy. I want to share with you in the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost." And one more verse in Luke chapter 1, verse 29. It'll be on the screen. To a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, for the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. I want to draw your attention at one more moment in our text, the Psalm 78, and it simply says, and they limited the Holy One of Israel. Somebody say this one more time, take the limits off. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the anointing that lifts the burden, destroys the yoke. Touch our hearts, God. Challenge us, change us. Let us leave here with a new understanding of no more limits. Let our faith arise. God, let us start seeing your power in spite of of our problems. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Watch this video. Limit family today. I believe more now than ever before, we as men, women, boys, girls, moms and dads must speak no more limits. Who wants to live a life of limitation? Who wants to put a measuring stick on God? Whenever he has opened up the windows, the Bible says he will open up the windows and pour out blessings on us that we cannot, catch this, contain. God wants you to have his best. Not settle in the storm, but walk through it and come out shouting and praising and saying, had it not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? So this morning, if I can, I want to shift your mentality, change your mindset and, and, and get you to think just for a moment, what would happen if you allowed yourself to take limits off of your God? This God that we serve and we praise and we magnify in the building, but outside the house, sometimes we forget. Can somebody testify? Sometimes we forget because sometimes we get overwhelmed. We get overbearing with life's problems. But can I tell you problems, my problems, I don't know about your problems, but my problems can't compare to God's power. My problems have no business controlling my emotions. When God's power has been sent to raise the dead, heal the sick, open blinded eyes, save the, law, save the lost, God is a refuge and a strong tower. If he's, ha if he's not a strong tower and he's not a refuge, then what we're preaching is, is, is a lie. We might as well close our Bibles, sh shut the doors, put a lock on the doors, and quit coming to church. But if we believe he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, if we believe he's Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, first and the last, if we believe that, how many believes it's okay if we start living like it? We start talking like it. We start praising like it. Come on. He is the best thing that's ever happened to you. And in our text of the series in Psalms chapter 78, we see the lifestyle of, uh, and shift in the mentality of people, the children of Israel, God's children, and how the Bible says that they limited God. They, they even tempted him, trying to push him to the limits. How many has got some kids out there that will push you to the limits? Yeah. They, they know that if you tell them three times, they got one more time before you come spank their bottom. Come on. Kids know how to limit. 
They know how to test you. And that's what the children of Israel, in many ways, they were limiting God. They were saying, well, Lord, you can handle one, two, three, four, five of my problems, but you can't go this deep. It's too trouble. It's too much. It's too hard. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's too chaotic. You can't fix my problem. Listen, a lot of times that's because of pride. Pride will keep us from letting God take complete control over our lives. And we will limit what we think he can and cannot do. Can I tell you something? He is God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But listen, don't stop there. He's also God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Julie, John, Susie, my God, Rob, and Bob, and Jesus, and any name that you could throw. You ought to throw your name in there and say, he's my God, and the devil can't do nothing about it. Yeah, fill your name in there, wherever it fits. You got to start seeing God as your source. Start seeing God as your answer. In our text, the word limit, in that particular text, it simply means, in its clearest form, means to cause pain. Check it out in the Hebrews. And you will notice that in that interpretation, they were causing hurt to God when they put limits on Him. And that's what we do when we limit God. Listen, when we place limits on Him, it puts us in a place where we are limited to. What are the miracles, the blessings, the overcomer coming moments? What are the seasons that we are missing out on being better than we are right now? What, what could be some things that we're missing out on as, simply as a result of us limiting God? I refuse to be the same person I am in 2017 in 2018. I've been through too much hell to expect God to be as good as he was in 2017. I'm going to expect God to be better in 2018 than he was in 2017. Come on, because he gets gooder and gooder. His grace and his mercy are new each and every day. What I had yesterday ain't good enough for me tomorrow. I got to believe that his amazing grace, how sweet the sound. It saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I got to believe that his word, it, is, it speaks deep, calls unto deep. That's what the Bible says. His word, it, it is here to take us from glory to glory, from faith to faith. How many is ready to do more in 2018? His birth, it all started somewhere. And this morning, I want you to know it started at his birth. The Bible says that Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, I want to, I want to think about this for a moment. How would your life change if you had walked or had to walk, not ride, but walk to San Antonio this morning? How would you be affected? Many times... How many could, could declare in this place that wouldn't be a comfortable season? If we took your car away, no motorcycle, no bike, but you had to walk to San Antonio, Houston. How about in the heat of the day, like in the summers, time, summertime? How, how many would like to do that? Would, would that be fun? Just, just let's just go have a great road trip. I don't think I'd get any volunteers for it. Many times in life, it's not how far you have to go. It's the circumstances in which you have to go through to get to your destination that will affect your faith. It's the circumstance. Not necessarily the length. It's what you got to go through to get there. You wouldn't mind going to San Antonio and going down on the river walk and eating some good Mexican food. Come on. But if you take the car away, the journey changes a little bit. If you notice when people are delayed or their lives are put on hold, this is when many abandon ship. They quit. They throw in the towel. Perhaps that's why Jesus declared to us in uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 22, you will be hated for all, by all men's sake, for my sake, but he who endures till the end shall be Saved. There's something about endurance, Brother Mike, that teaches us that the race isn't to the swift. It isn't to the strong, but it's to those who finish the race. 
And the devil's job is to discourage us because of, and he uses circumstances to do it. Church, we must never give up. Somebody say, don't give up. When God is working for us, we need to let him work. If we give up before, it's, before he's done, we could miss out on our destiny. You could miss out on your purpose. Paul said it like this, I press toward the mark of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus. Notice the mark. Have you ever felt like that the enemy moves the mark? You make it and you think you're about right there and then it's like the devil saying, oh, no, 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 I'm going to move it. Come on a little bit further. No, you thought you was going to get it. No, and it's like we're playing tag with the devil. Listen to me. Don't give him more power than he's got. He can't move the mark. He doesn't change your destiny location. He can use circumstances to get you to think the mark has moved. Paul said, I press toward the mark of the high calling. Listen, anything that's high, anything that's worth having is going to be tough sometimes. If you're going to build your family, you're going to have to fight for your family. If you're going to have a good marriage, you're going to have to put some work in. You're going to have to do some counseling. You might have to get some second other people's opinion. You've got to stay in this word. You've got to stay in prayer. And you've got to continually fight for what you know is yours. You can't allow the enemy to come in and, and cause chaos and then quit. What if we all just quit because chaos and problems knocked on our door? Trouble's always going to be here. Problems are always going to arise. But listen to me. Jesus said it like this. Let God arise and let your enemies be scattered. Come on. If God be for you, who can be against you? That was the question Paul said. So I just want to ask you, start changing your mentality. Start allowing yourself to recognize that God's not against you. He's for you. And sometimes when the enemy tries to convince you your destination's changed... Be reminded, no, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. And if you'll learn while on the journey how to pass the tests that come your way, you'll get to your destination a little faster. The children of Israel had a three-day journey to the promised land, but that three-day journey turned to 40 years because they focused on what they didn't have more than who they did have. And, be, and suddenly their complaints and their groanings. Could it be in 2017 we've gotten so selfish that we're more focused on what we don't have more than focusing on the source that we do have? And because we've lost and forgotten and we've limited this God we say we serve, we can't have or handle what he's ready to give us because we can't be trusted with it yet. Come on, it's worth thinking about. Let me draw your attention to this story with Mary and Joseph. You remember Mary, the Bible says that an angel came in her bedroom, stood at the foot of the bed and said, Mary, thou hast found favor. You're highly favored amongst women. He said, everybody's going to want to be you. Can I tell you something? By the time he got done telling her what she was about to carry, she was thinking, what? I don't want to be me. I'm sure nobody else wants to be me. Here's this virgin, never been touched by him, ever, never been, had intimacy with another man, and she's betrothed or she's engaged to a man. She's about to get married, and her, this angel says she's going to carry something that is impossible to carry hmm. without bringing a reproach. She, her mindset is, what am I supposed to do with this calling, with this purpose, with this circumstance? Somebody say circumstance. The Bible says that by, uh, she, as she's dealing with this situation, Scriptures tells us that she was troubled at this saying. The Bible tells us in, in our text in the book of Luke that uh, it was Joseph who, after he was told by an angel that she was pregnant by the Holy Ghost, after he was fits into give up on her. He was going to uh, do away with her privately uh, because of the situation, because of the circumstance. It was too much for him to bear. How is this lady? You know, it would be kind of like, maybe we could paint the picture this way. They're hanging out. They've been chilling, going to the movies, eating popcorn, having a great time. Joseph ain't even kissed her yet. 
But he starts noticing that she get, starts gaining a little bit of weight in the center. And it could be that she's put it off waiting for the right time, but suddenly it ain't, it ain't too long. A couple months later, she starts getting a little fluffy and he starts get, getting a little concerned. He said, baby, are you sure you want to have those double mashed potatoes on that plate today? And she says, well, <laughs> I just, I've been meaning to talk to you about this. <laughs> No, I've been having a lot of emotions and I see, I might see, look a little bit different, but it's because <laughs> I've just been waiting for the right time to take. Joseph, you're going to laugh at it. I, I'm expecting, I'm expecting, and Joseph's looking at her with a strange face. He's expecting, expecting what? You got furniture coming to the new house? It's what you're expecting. You expecting lazy boy to show up anytime? She says, no. I'm having a baby. A baby? How are you having a baby? I ain't expecting that. A baby. Suddenly his mind shifts. His limitation steps in and he says, How is this? How could this be? And he gets so frustrated, he walks out the door, probably like many of us, slammed the door, angry and mad and saying everything else but what needs to be said. And they walk and they depart. This is 2017 version. Just stay with me. And you can imagine. And she goes to her cousin's house, Elizabeth's house, and uh, she and and and, and 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 what she's carrying causes what Elizabeth's carrying to leap in her womb. And this is John the Baptist that's about to be born, her and the cousin of Jesus. And 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 and, and suddenly everything that everywhere Mary goes, she starts. She continues to affect her atmosphere. How many believe just because you're carrying something abnormal, it doesn't mean you shouldn't keep making an impact on the atmosphere that you're in? Just because it's confusing, just because it's heavy, just because it doesn't make sense, doesn't mean it's meant to take you out. It could be meant to take you up. We're waiting on God to come bring us up, and God is waiting on us to come up to give Him the praise that He's worthy of. Here's Mary and Joseph, and they're in a hard place. Joseph is so frustrated. He's probably hanging out with his buddies one night. He's, he's, I don't know if he's playing poker or if he's drinking root beer. I don't know, but he's having a good time with the guys, and the guys are saying, man, you ain't got to do this. You can just put her, put her away. Nobody's got to know. Do it secretly. This circumstance is way too hard for you. You've waited a long time. She's, she messed up, man. She's going to miss out. You're the qualm. Come on. You, you, you are the bomb.com. She ain't worth she, she ain't worth it. She's going to mess your life up. Just put her away. Just like the devil. Try to get you to walk away from your anointing. Walk away from your calling. Because your calling doesn't look like what you expected it to look like. What do you do when your calling doesn't look like what you expected it to look like? When the anointing on your life seems to be limited by your faith. Number one, if you're taking notes, if you have the notes from the app, you can look at that as well. But while he thought on these things, that's what Joseph said. While he thought on these things, he was thinking about it. What am I supposed to do? Am I put her away? Do I get rid of her? God, where are you? Have you ever asked the Lord that question? Have you ever questioned what God had on his mind when he allowed things to take place in your life that you couldn't explain? Lord, what is, what's on your mind? What, 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 what are you thinking about? These two people, Joseph and Mary, were both called by God to carry something they did not understand and could not explain. I need this to relate to you. I, I, I need you to see that they are no different than you and I. Have you ever been in a night season that seemed would never go away? Haley, the other, uh, uh, let's see, two nights ago, <clears throat> uh, she's had this tooth in her, in her mouth, and half the tooth came out, and the other half didn't come out. And it's been, the, I guess the gum, the skin, formed over the other part of the tooth. And, and so it's been weeks now that it's stayed in there. And she's like, no, Dad, I'm just going to let it come out. So, Baby, let me pull it for you. No, Dad, I'm just going to let it come. And, 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 and the other night, Friday night, uh, it starts coming out. And, uh, and I said, Baby, let me help you. She said, no, Dad, you're going to hurt me. 
I said, hurt you? I'm dad. I don't want to hurt you. So she starts putting limits on my ability to help her. Look at this. And she, so I, I'm, in the, I'm in the other room. I'm, I think I'm studying for this sermon in the kitchen. And she's in her bedroom. It's late. We're fixing to go to bed. And, and she's, uh, she's in, I, find, I go in there. She's real quiet. Anytime Haley's quiet, I better, something's going on. And I go in there and she's in the bathroom, her restroom. And she's in the mirror looking in her mouth, playing with this tooth, trying to pull it out. And blood's everywhere. I'm thinking, oh my God, who's dying? And she's got blood on my towel. She's got blood on the sink. I'm like, Haley, what are you doing? You're making a bigger mess than has to be made if you'll just let daddy help you. I'm telling you, for an hour and a half, I argued with that young lady to let me help her. And she cried and she bawled. And she, like many of us, she said, oh, my life is over. This is horrible. She literally said, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And at one time she said, I'm in so much pain, I just want to die. Ten years old, this is Haley. And I'm laughing, but I'm trying to have compassion because she said, you don't care, you just want to jerk it out, Dad. You don't care what I'm feeling. And I'm thinking, baby, I do. And then she brings up how I dealt with a situation years ago and had a string on her tooth and I jerked it out and... And I scarred her mind forever. And I'm thinking, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what was God thinking? Come on. Have you, what are you thinking, Lord, putting me through this circumstance in this situation? Here's the good news. When she finally let me put my hands on it, I pulled it out with ease. And what she thought was going to hurt her the worst actually brought comfort and peace. Because it was out. Sometimes you just got to get it out. Sometimes you just got to repent and let sin be covered by the blood. Condemnation will beat you over the head. Condemnation will beat you to the ground. But God's grace and mercy has come and followed you all the days of your life. Not to hurt you. Not to discourage you. Not to scare you. Not to make you run to religion. But to teach you how to walk in fellowship and relationship with the Father. With the Son. With the Holy Spirit that wants to comfort you and guide you. Lead you and teach you. To raise you up. Not take you down. But we must take limits off of God. What would happen if you had relationship with him 24-7 instead of two minutes a day? What would happen if we read our Bible, if we witnessed, if we shared the gospel, if, if, we, if we lived the life instead of talking the talk? What would happen, church? How many people know that you believe in Jesus as the Savior, born of a virgin, risen after being crucified, how many people know that your faith is in the death, burial, and resurrection of this man named Jesus? Many times we will limit who God is by what we don't say, not always what we're saying. And I'm just telling you, the Lord has something on His mind much greater than what you have on your mind. Job said it like this in Job 23 and 8. He said, Behold, I go forward. But he is not there and backward, but I cannot perceive him. Go on the left hand and where he doth not work, but I cannot find him. And he hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. But he knows the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. How many understand he's trying to make you better? He's not trying to make you worse. David said it like this in Psalms 35, 30 and 5 and 8. He says, weeping may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. In my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by the favor, by thy favor, thou hast made my mountain in stand, to stand strong. Thou didst hide thy face. Why are you hiding in the midst of a mountain situation? And I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made my supplication. Church, I'm telling you, Like Joseph trying to figure it out, he pondered it in his mind. What am I, how am I going to handle it? How am I going to fix this situation? What's on your mind is not what's on God's mind. 
He's got great things in store for you. Number two, can God, can the Savior, can the Lord, can Jesus be born in a dysfunctional family? That's a big question. Can He work in a dysfunctional circumstance and situation? He could have been born in a cathedral. He could have been born to a rich family. He could have been born to servants and butlers. He could have been born with ten thousands of angels singing and declaring His holiness and His majesty. But no, 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 no. What was on God's mind? Was, I need this to be real. I need it to hit home. I need to find somebody that can carry something that nobody has ever carried before so I can do something I've never done before. No, he was born without water. He was born without a house. He was born without a nanny, without a bottle, without a doctor, without a midwife. My Lord, she didn't even have one of those shot things to shoot in her spine. They take away the pain. An epidural, I think is what they call it. He was born with nothing and no one but two people God had handpicked and chosen to trust him. No matter what it looked like, they did choose to trust him. He handpicked these two individuals, Joseph and Mary, to carry out his purpose for this miracle. Let me ask you something. What has God handpicked you to do for him? Because he has handpicked you. He has chosen you. He's chosen you and he's called you to come out of darkness into his marvelous light. He's called you to walk to Bethlehem, if you will. Ride on a donkey if you've got to. Be un uncomfortable. Be in a place that's insignificant and seems like there's no way that God could use this situation. And in the midst... Uh, on the, on the midst, in the midst of the circumstance, learn how to start seeing God for who He is, not the problems for what they are. His power is greater than your problems. The Bible says one of the names of God is Jehovah Shama. Say that with me. Jehovah Shama. I'll say it like you mean it. Say Jehovah Shama. It means I'm the God that's there. I'm there. I'm not just there in the good times. I'm there in the bad times. I'm present in the midst of your trouble. I am with you. My power and my authority walk with you, Joseph and Mary. I know it's tough. Joseph, I know you ain't talked to your wife in six weeks. I, I, I know you're ready to give up and throw in the towel and, and Put her to the side. Don't you do it. I got something on my mind that's going to blow your mind if you'll just keep on pressing forward. Listen to me. There's some things on God's mind that's going to blow your mind if you won't let your dysfunctionality mess up His plan for your life. It's a perfect plan. It's not a permissive plan. It's a perfect plan. God's plan was perfect for Joseph and Mary. But at this moment, it was a problem. She could be stoned. His name would be completely ruined. Isn't it interesting that now everyone would know because God was taking them back to the city that he was from to register, pay a tax, and now they're going to... He can't hide that she's got this big bump in her belly. They're really going to think she gained a lot of weight. How do you hide being pregnant nine months later? It's interesting, he would take them all the way back to the city that Joseph started his life in. There's some things that God will take you back to. Not so that he can discourage you, hurt you, cause harm to you, but so that he can reveal his glory in you. If you're going to take the limits off of God, you must trust him to, to get glory through you. And grow your faith in Him. You understand limits have everything to do with faith. The reason we place limits on God is, in, is because our faith has been buried and fear controls every move that we make. Fear was tr controlling Joseph. Fear, in many ways, was controlling Mary. 
understand most of the things that we worry about, statistically, I think it's like 98%, 98% or I know it's in the 90s, the things that we worry about never even happen. But yet the enemy knows how to use fear as a tactic to delay us from our ultimate destiny and ultimate goal. The Lord has already gone before us. He's already fighting the battle. He's already preparing the victory for us. Listen to me. That's why I'm glad. I don't need, just need God in my victory moments. I need God to walk with me in the, in the storm, in the battle. I need a God who will be there. I need a Jehovah Shammah who will stand with me through the storm so that when, while I'm walking through it, that's why David could say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because he knew thy rod and thy staff. He said, your presence is with me. They comfort me. You've got to know what to hold on to when you've lost everything else, when you've let go of everybody else. You can hold on to his unchanging hand. You can hold on to this Savior, this Lord, this King who says, I've called you by name and I know who you are. His power is greater than your problem. Take the limits off. Jehovah Shammah, he's there. He's with you. Isaiah 43 and 2 says, When thou passest through the waters, I will be there. He says, When you pass through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. He said, You won't smell like it. You won't even smell like where you came from. Church, I'm telling you, he has a plan and a purpose for your life. Mary and Joseph had to recognize and learn. Aren't you glad you got somebody you can look at as an example to say, wow, if he did it through them, he can do it through me. He's not just the God of victory. He's the God that precedes the victory. Number three, while you were looking for a blessing, your blessing is looking for you. You see, you got to understand, Matthew chapter 2 and 11 says it like this. And when they had come into the manger, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother. They fell down and worshipped. And when they had opened to their treasures, they presented gifts to him with gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Notice, I read the scripture to you earlier in offering. You see, God had already went ahead and started dealing with the hearts of shepherds and wise men. While Joseph is in the barn, because they had no room in the inn. Joseph is in the barn. His, 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 his wife, his, his, his uh, fiance rather, is, is, is giving birth to this baby named Jesus. And his mind is still full of chaos, wondering, well, I got, not only do I have the baby to deal with, but I got, I got to deal with this money situation because I'm short on my taxes. Have you ever been in a place where you couldn't pay your taxes when they needed to be paid? Don't raise your hand. The IRS is probably in here right now watching. There's nothing worse than having that pressure, having to come up with something that you're a little short in. Joseph is dealing with it. But listen, I want you to see how God goes before and actually deals with the situation, not just the baby thing, but he deals with the financial struggle. And the scriptures say he speaks to these wise men these shepherds, and they bring everything that they need exactly when they need it. As if to say, while you're looking for the blessing, the blessing is looking for you. Church, we don't have to worry in 2018. God's got everything handled. He's going to take care of everything that you have need of. You don't have to fret. You don't have to get depressed. You don't have to pop pills to try to make it through tomorrow. You can just take the gospel one time, start speaking the word of faith and declaring that God will take care of me. He's going to, he's going to, he owns the cattle on a thousand hills and my blessing is on its way if I won't limit him by my faith. Fear cancels out your faith every single time. Psalms 23 and 6, 6 says it like this. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Listen, and I will. Somebody say, I will. I will. Say it. Say, I will. I will dwell. Notice it does matter where you hang out. It matters where you're at. It matters where your source is and where you're plugged in at. David said, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
You don't have to like my house. I don't have to like your house. But listen, we better all have a house that has the presence of God filled in it. We better all recognize that it is important to be in his house, be in his presence, be in a place that has been built and specifically set up for him to move in our life on a personal level. Come on, give him praise right there. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Last but not least, I'll leave you with this thought. Number four, bad don't look bad when God is in it. Mary's having the baby. Ah! Joseph hasn't trusted her. They've been trying to rebuild trust. They probably haven't been talking because that's usually what happens. Women don't talk to men. Men don't talk to women when they're mad at each other. And we think we're teaching each other. Well, I'm going to show her. I just won't talk. How's that working for you? Listen, the devil wants you to shut your mouth. He don't want you to talk. Because the moment you stop talking is the moment you lose your ability to change your circumstance with your words. I found that if you're saying the right thing because you're reading the right thing, you'll start changing the circumstance for the right reason. You got to speak life. And in all their silence, their silence was screaming for answers. Now she's screaming in pain. She's having this baby. And now they've not only had to uh, 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 start dealing with each other again, but now they're having to help each other. Who's going to cut the baby cord? Who's going to wipe her head? Who's going to give her some type of comfort? And Joseph has had to step up to the plate all along pondering in his mind what this calling is all about. Suddenly as that baby comes out and this baby wrapped up in flesh who is God and God alone lets out the faintest of cries. Wah. Wah. Suddenly Joseph's heart is pricked. Mary's tears begin to flow and they realize this is what it's all about. They're not in the greatest of atmospheres, the animals, the barn. But they're in the presence of the king. And suddenly what was around them in the natural didn't matter anymore. A knock comes on the door. And what they need in the natural is brought by wise men and shepherds. And they begin to lay down frankincense and myrrh and gold and silver. Don't you tell me our king ain't worth giving the best. If you want God's best, you got to give him your best. You hear me real good. It's amazing to me how people want to live on poverty for God, but they want to live in the White House for people. And we want to keep up with the Joneses and the Andersons. I got news for you. The Joneses and Andersons didn't do one thing for you. But Jesus came through the womb of a virgin. He was, he was crucified as a man. But he rose as the King of kings and the Lord of lords for you. So you could have life and life more abundant. His grace is sufficient. His mercy is everlasting. And his power is greater than your problem. Come on, give him praise in this house today. I'll leave you with this scripture. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 says, I hath not seen. You know what happens to the person who takes the limits off? I believe if Joseph and Mary could speak to us today, they would declare this, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them. Here's the key, that love him. Do you love God more than you love things? He's the gift that keeps on giving. You don't have to catch the blessing. The blessing has already caught you. 
if you've accepted him as your savior. Get ready. When there's no limits, there's great possibilities. Eye hath not seen, ear hath not heard. It hasn't even entered into the heart of man the possibilities that God's going to do in your life. Take the limits off, church. Don't you limit this Savior. Maybe you've limited Him to forgiving you because of your past, because of your mistakes. Here's the good news. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing shall, shall tribulation. No. Shall circumstances? No. Shall problems? No. Shall sin? No. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God. Death? Height? No. His love is never movable. And it's unchanging. And as you stand in this place, He wants you to receive it before you leave this, this house today. Come on, stand with me.